This is Sylvia Duckworth and this is a very beginner tutorial for the new Adobe app called Fresco. I've just started using it. I'm probably going to get a few things wrong here. There's a lot of things I don't know how to use in this app. So please comment in the comments below if there's something that I got wrong or maybe there's something that I missed. I'm a sketch noter, so I'm really going to focus on the tools that I use for sketch noting. I'm not an artist that uses the paint brushes and whatnot. I'm just using for a very basic pen. But let's just get started. When you open up the app for the first time, you're going to be asked to either log into your Adobe account if you have one already or to create one. I always just sign in with my Google sign in. The first thing you want to do is choose a size for your canvas and you've got a choice between custom size, current screen size, my size or square. I'm just going to go with the current screen size so let me open that one up. Take a look at the right hand side. You're going to see your layers. Every drawing opens up to two layers. The top layer is the layer that you're going to be drawing on. It's outlined in blue and now just tap on the bottom layer. That bottom layer has the color of your canvas. You can change the color of your canvas. If you touch the three dots and then touch convert to pixel layer and then come over to your colors here on the very left hand side if you hit the color while it's black. Touch that you'll notice that you've got some colors here. If you go to all fresco colors you've got 32 colors so just tap that open and you can choose one of those maybe a, a beige and then what you want to do is you want to go up to this paint can right there and then you just want to touch your whole screen and the whole thing will turn beige. So that's how you change the color of your background. I actually don't want a beige background. I just want it white so I'm going to hit the undo button which is at the top right hand corner so that I have a nice white background. Okay, we're going to try out the drawing tools now. So make sure you are on the drawing layer. So you want to click on the top layer. And now let's take a look at the tools on the top left hand corner. If you tap this twice, these are called pixel brushes. Tap the next one twice, these are live brushes. And the one underneath that is called vector brushes. And this is the tool that I'm going to use. As a sketch noter, it just gives me nice consistency. And I'm going to go with the black color. So it's now beige. So make sure that we've got that back to black by tapping on the black. Just underneath here, you can change the thickness of your pen by dragging up and down with your finger or with your stylus. I like to have it around 10 or so. And then just give it a scribble and see what it looks like. Now you notice that if you have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, when you press hard it makes it thicker and when you press light it goes lighter. So I actually want to turn that feature off. I want an even stroke. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom where you've got this icon here and where it says pressure dynamics. I'm just going to turn that off. And so now wherever I draw it's a nice even stroke. The eraser is fourth from the top so one two three four tap the eraser and then you can erase things and you can also change the size of your eraser by the same way by adjusting the size down here. If you're wondering what this circle is this circle is just a quick way to get to the eraser. So if you tap on the circle it'll go into erase mode and then you have to tap back on the pen to get the pen back. So what I like to do before I begin drawing is I like to have a grid in my background because it gives me some perspective of when I'm zooming in and when I'm zooming out and also it gives me straight lines if I'm drawing text. Unfortunately the app at this point does not have an option for a grid. There's no pen that creates a grid and there's no pre-made grids that you can insert into your canvas. So you have to actually go online and look for a grid and then import it as an image. There's a grid that I like to use and I've uploaded it to my Google Drive. Please go to Safari and visit bit.ly 
slash sil grid, capital S, capital G. You have to do this in Safari to make this work. It will not work in Chrome. So once you're in Safari, just tap and hold your finger and then tap Add to Photos. So that'll be on your camera roll. So if you go back to Fresco now, and you go to your images there, and then go to Photos, and go to Recent, you can tap on the grid. Now zoom it in so that it fits the whole canvas. The top right hand corner, press Done. And now I want you to change the opacity of the grid because it's a little bit dark. If you tap on the top right hand corner, those three circles and lines there, and then where it says opacity, just turn it down so it's nice and light. And then you can tap back on that icon to get rid of that. So now you're ready to draw, but if you take a look at your layers on the right, notice how you've got the grid as your top layer. You don't want it on the top, you want it in the middle. So just drag that so it is not on the top. If it's not working for you, you might need to take the middle layer and drag that to the top. Now the layer you're going to be drawing on is on the top. The grid is in the middle and the background color is at the very bottom. So tap on the top layer because that's where we're going to be drawing now. I did want to talk a bit more about these colors. So if you tap back on the color well, You've got a color wheel, so you can create your own colors. And so say I want to um, create a color here, and then I can go to, go to Recent, and then tap the plus sign, and I can save that color. But these colors that you use, that you create in the color wheel, if you were to save them like that, they only get saved in the drawing that you're currently doing. They don't get saved into your library. So if you want to save colors in your library, you have to do something completely different. So I was really amazed by, I'm, I'm quite new to the Adobe ecosystem, but I have managed to import a bunch of colors. Take a look at here. If I go to all, and then I go to, if I tap it again, so underneath fresco colors, you've got my library. And when you open up this app for the first time, you won't have anything there, but you can see I've got 215 different colors there. And I'm going to show you now how I imported all those colors. So what you need to do is you need to go to color.adobe.com and then you want to actually go to slash explore. And they're going to again prompt you to log in with your Adobe account. But the other thing they want you to do is they want you for whatever reason to turn your screen in this mode. So I don't know what this is going to do to the recording. It might turn it on its side. <laughs> we'll find out. But see how you've got, it, it defaults to a lot of blues, but if you want, say, pinks, or maybe you want a palette of rainbow colors, you can just go like rainbow. And here's a nice rainbow color here. Now, right over here, right in the center, I'm just going to tap on this here. And that's going to add it to my library. So here's the amazing thing is now I'm going to go back to the app, Fresco. And if I were to go to my library now, do you see how it's been added automatically? The rainbow color is the top layer. So that's how easy it is to import colors using the Adobe Colors website. You can also use an app called Adobe Capture if you want to import your own palettes. Okay, let's start drawing. Please make sure you're on the top layer when you're drawing. You don't want to be drawing on the middle layer, that's the grid. You don't want to draw on the bottom layer, that's the background. You want to be on the top layer. Make sure you have the vector brush selected, basic round, and you want to have it around 10 thickness. Uh, let's zoom in. And we can get rid of that circle. I don't want that. Let's zoom in and let's start off by doing, well, that might be a little bit too thick. So I might lower this a bit. We're going to be drawing a light bulb. So something like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. That's how I draw a light bulb. Now we're going to color it in. Let's go with a yellow. So I'm going to tap on 
the black and go with the swatches, the yellow color. And I'm going to tap on the paint tool there. So once I've selected that tool, all I need to do is tap inside whatever area I want to color in that color and it'll automatically color. I'm going to choose a different color for the socket. I'm going to go with the gray and then just tap inside there. Now I do want to add some lines to the socket, so I'm going to go back to my pen, sorry, this pen, and I'm going to switch back to black, and then I'm going to do three lines just like that. So we have a light bulb. If I want to change the position of that light bulb, I'm going to hit this tool. It's called the transform tool. So one, two, three, four, five from the top left hand corner. If I hit that button, now I can make the object smaller or bigger. I can also turn it around. So that's a really handy tool. When I'm done placing it, top right hand corner, I'm going to tap done. Let's try drawing another object. Let's just go with a plain triangle and I'm going to choose a different color now. I'm going to tap the black circle and hit red and then again the paint can and just tap inside. Okay, now if I want to change the position of one of these items, if I hit the transform tool, it's going to move both of these items, so I don't want that. I just want to move one item. So I'm going to use the lasso tool, which is right here, and I'm going to lasso the triangle, and then I'm going to hit the transform tool again, which is right above the lasso tool. Oh, I just noticed that the transform tool can also be found in the toolbar at the bottom, so it can be found the toolbar on the side and at the bottom as well once you've isolated something with the lasso tool. And now I can isolate that and move that around and then hit done. Now at the very bottom I need to deselect the lasso tool right there. Notice now there's a tool on the left hand side, it's just under the paint can and it's the eyedropper tool so if you tap that you can drag it on top of a color to match a color on your canvas. You can also just press and hold anywhere on your canvas to bring up that tool. The other things I want to show you, if you look at the very top right hand corner, you've got an undo button and you've got a redo button. This question mark will give you some tutorials and some other tours and some other options for you to explore. This is the share button to publish and export. This is a settings button where you can change certain things on your canvas and on your objects, on your drawings. The tool here in the corner allows you to get rid of all the tools so you've got a larger canvas to draw on. And we've looked at these icons already. This is layers. This does things that you can change the opacity of the layer. Down here, if you keep on going there, you add a layer with a plus sign. This eye is really important because you can hide layers. So for example, when I publish this drawing, I'm going to want to hide the grid. So I'm going to tap on the grid layer and then hit the eye and now you can't see the grid. And then these three dots have other options for the layer as well. The very bottom right hand corner is a ruler, so if you select that and then you select a pen, you can draw nice straight lines. So that is the end of my tutorial. I hope you have fun with this app and have fun sketchnoting.